start this. Okay, so for those of you who are watching this in the guild, just leave me a little comment. Let me know if you can hear me, and um, and you'll be able to hear Mar Mariano here in just a second. Um, we should be looking at his screen. And for those of you who are here with me live, uh, there you should be seeing him right now. So everybody can hear and see Mariano's screen, right? Yep. Yes. Says Matthew. Awesome. Thanks, Santi. Okay. All right, so um, Mariano is game for us to kind of get on and figure out what we're going to do. So uh, let's figure that out a little bit. <laughs> First, Mariano, uh, let me thank you very much for coming. Um, I've been a fan of your work for a long time. and uh, uh, Don't tell me that, man. It's such an honor to be here. Oh, no. I mean, this is your work. And it's so there's so much expression in it, too, right? And I remember... Um, there were several times your work came up while I worked at Pixelogic, so it was really cool. Ah, this is awesome. So why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about what you do? Uh, now, like, are you well, in, so, a, in a job? So right or, now, I'm, um, yeah. yeah, right now I'm a, a freelancer character artist. Uh, so I've been working uh, a lot for for the toys industry and uh, some cinematic stuff, a little bit of games. Yeah. Uh, a few months ago, I was uh, still at Rockstar. I was working as a character artist there uh, for uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Uh, it's probably coming out sometime this year. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's great. So um, right now you're freelance, right? Yeah. OK. And uh, what does that look like? Does that is that something where you have to go down and find a bunch of um, uh, clients or do the clients come to you? How does that work for you? Um, well, I, I was a freelancer before I came to Canada. Okay. So before before I joined Rockstar, I was freelancing for about three years. Uh -huh. So I had a few uh, pretty steady clients already. Got it. And uh, after I left Rockstar, I kind of picked up at the same clients. Okay. So uh, I don't know. The work kind of just happens yeah <laughs> i don't know how to explain yeah i got it I, so not, it's, I, you, I you're just working you're, you're just there at your computer and thankfully the emails keep coming in right yeah yeah i kind of keep always producing something mm -hmm. like as a, as a personal work yeah so i'm always uh, doing some stuff and posting on the internet uh, social media and yeah. all that yeah so like every every now and then the clients just keep emailing me. Yeah. And, uh, some new clients, some some of the same clients. So it's always it's always kind of different. Yeah. Can you check out the um, the orangutan picture? Can you just open that in your screen? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is the was the last one I did. Yeah, yeah. I was noticing that it's just so beautiful. So, um, what kind of work are they? Are you getting hired to do? Are, are you doing it on the um, digital sculpting side, or is it characters that they're asking you to complete? What kind of projects are you working on? Yeah, so mostly now I'm working on toys. Okay. Um, uh, mostly with McFarlane toys. Okay. So the the majority of work I do is, is sculpting characters in ZBrush today, hmm. which okay. is the most fun I can have, actually. Yeah, I understand so, that. Uh, yeah, and then on the side, I always like to keep things uh, different. Mm -hmm. So when I'm uh, doing a lot of, uh, right now I'm doing a lot of sculpture. Uh, sculpture. Yeah. So I, I try to go to rendering and now I'm trying to learn fur uh -huh. and, and V-Ray. So always keep the, keep things different from like personal and professional work. Okay, no, I got that. Um, so mostly toys. Do you have some of the toy work yeah. on your uh, on your art station? Uh, yeah, I do. I have some. Let's take a look at that. Stuff I did you. last year, I think. Oh, sorry. Just so we have some context. Yeah, of course. Uh, so these are some uh, some of the toys I did last year mm -hmm. and uh, 2016. Oh yeah, awesome. toys. Man. beautiful. So what's in a from Titanfall? A little bit. What's involved in this? Are you using ZBrush? Are you using Maya? Uh, designer? It's, I would say it's like 80% ZBrush. Okay. And then every now and then I use Marvelous and um, Max for some uh, 3ds Max for yeah. some accessories or hard surface stuff. 
Yeah. But the main the main part of the work is it's ZBrush. That's great. And are you working in Pose? Do you do T Mesh? How do you segue this? Uh, it kind of depends, actually. Uh, these these ones from uh, Titanfall, I got the the game model to work on. Okay, awesome. So the game model is pretty low res. You have no details there, mm. and they are on T Pose. Oh, okay. So I was just uh, detailing everything on t uh, in T Pose, and yeah. then posing as the client prefer and then going from there but okay. some of the work i just started on the pose like uh Negan here it was a t pose and then i did a couple of poses mm -hmm. uh, here I, I guess it depends if it's an actual action figure or if, if it's a statue you know? okay this one most of the work is is like for action figures okay so they are mostly on t pose and then when it's statues, then you go to a full, fully posed model, mm -hmm. like these ones. Yeah, and I have a bunch of new stuff that haven't come, came out yet okay. that I can't show. Yeah. But this is most of stuff I did last year. All right, great. Okay, so there's a lot of freelance work that you're doing here. Are you in games doing freelance characters much, or are you just loving oh. a, loving the toy industry? Yeah, right now, since I left Rockstar, I haven't done any any freelance for games. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just because I'm not really doing game stuff for a personal portfolio, so I think that doesn't attract this kind of client. Yeah, got it. And as I'm doing a lot of uh, just sculpture work, I think it attracts more uh, toy industry related work, you know, like these sculptures. Yep. It kind of brings the client that it's, it, it's the focus, you know. But so far I'm loving the, the toys industry. I think it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more relaxed. I don't yeah. know if that's the word, but it's, it's I don't want to say easier, but it's more relaxed. You know, they have usually more time to work on figures. Uh, you have um, the art direction is a bit more. I don't know. It's it's more relaxed to work on. It's just way less stress, I guess. Okay, I get that. Uh, so, how long do you usually have? to be working like are you working on these projects for a week or three weeks or three days yeah i think it varies a lot there are some projects that would take like a week mm -hmm. uh, some would take a month uh, i have worked on projects that took like three months uh, with a lot of back and forth between the the art director yeah so i guess it varies a lot but i would say like three weeks is the average Oh wow! Okay, so like one of either both of these on average about three weeks to get these things done. Yeah, yeah, both of those were about three two weeks. And does that involve cutting it up for three D printing or any of that stuff, or is your deliverable just the the file? Yeah, with, with McFarland Toys, I deliver just the model. I okay. don't do the cuts. Okay, but some other companies you may have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess it varies from from company to company. Right, and it makes sense, and and I'm sure uh, McFarland's got a pretty strong 3D print pipeline, so they don't they got somebody. Yeah, probably them. they're pretty old in the industry, so they know what, to, what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, yeah. All right, so um, how long have you been freelancing? Um, well, I left Rockstar it was April last year, so like less than a month for now, uh, less than a year for now. Yeah, was it a good leave? You know, you were just ready to. Do your own thing? Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't a fight or, or an argument or anything like that. It was just like I, I was there for two years yep. working on the game. Yep. And um, I just felt that it wasn't, not that it wasn't for me anymore, but it was just like a, a life, a, a kind of a life decision, you know, to balance life and work a little bit better for me. Totally. And uh, I'm kind of, in that weird phase of life, trying to work a little bit less, uh, do more personal work, 
uh, spending more time with family, with friends. And um, so that's why I decided to, to become a freelance again. Okay. I think it's, it's, it's a better life uh, style for me now. Mm. Makes sense. Um, and let's take a look at that uh, ringeting then again. Then let's yeah, dive sure. into this for a second. And uh, and I want to just understand like what you look for in your personal work. Like what makes you uh, excited? Uh, what do you mean? You mean like for inspiration? Yeah. Like what what brought you to this this character, this project? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I I get inspiration from a lot of different stuff. Uh huh. And um, I guess monkeys in general, like apes, uh, chimps, you can see the other projects I, I've done as yeah. a personal project as well as the chimps. So I kind of love uh, animals and nature and all that. And uh, I'm not sure if I saw something like an orangutan some, somewhere that just inspired me. But one day I just started to sculpt something and in the end of the day it was an orangutan and I thought like, okay, I'm going to go from there, uh, take this time and try to learn how to do proper fur, uh, try to do like a realistic render and, and the thing kind of evolved by itself. It's kind of, it's kind of weird, but that's happening a lot on my personal work lately. Mm -hmm. it, it, I kind of just start with a rough, uh, like a raw inspiration from something. Okay. And then the piece just evolves by itself. You know? Okay. Got it. Uh, so what, uh, do, do you have some process pictures on this one? Yeah. Um, so I have my working progress images here. Let's see. So this, I think this was the first render. Damn. Um, you can see everything's pretty rough, but this sculpture is kind of there. Mm -hmm. like after that, I, I came back to ZBrush a lot of times yeah. to just refine what I needed uh, yeah. based on the render. Mm -hmm. But that was, I think, it was the first render test. And then doing some lighting tests, adding detail on the sculpture, and then the nearly ridiculous fur test. <laughs> What do you use for fur? Um, this one was Ornatrix. Was which, sorry? Uh, Ornatrix. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is something a little bit better with more layers of fur. Mm -hmm. It was a, a pretty big learning curve for, for me. Yeah. I think this was the heaviest uh, fur uh, model I've ever done. So it was a pretty cool project for me to learn. That's cool. And then it, it's, it kind of, it was kind of frustrating because as I'm, I'm not much of a fur guy, every time I did something different, I kind of lost the, the grooming. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, I have to do everything again. So I did and redid this for like 20 times. Oh man. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of tests, I see. Yeah, lots of tests. And my PC is not the best PC right now. Yeah. So the, the first kind of takes quite a while to render. Yeah, I get that. That is pretty awesome though. Uh, what's it rendered in? It's a uh, view rate. View rate. All right. Okay. Yeah, max and view rate. Okay. View ray it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty fun project. Cool. And uh, the feedback so far has been great. Oh, it's good. Let's take a look at your uh, the the chimpanzee one. That one I remember seeing that um, at ZBC. That was just so awesome. Uh, cool, man. Thanks. It's so crazy to be talking to you. I'm sorry. I'm kind of a fanboy here. <laughs> I don't want to be, but I kind of am right now. So it's kind of crazy because I remember uh, watching one of your videos about anatomy like six, seven years ago. And that just makes me go nuts. Oh, uh, well, I saw this and I was like, oh my God, I am so jealous of this piece. Uh, it's uh, like Mariano just killed it with this. So much dynamic uh, energy, so much story. Yes, you know, it's just so awesome. 
to be able to chat and and talk about your process because this is you know how how long did it take to make this piece? Uh, this I think I was working on this for about a month, mm -hmm. but again it was completely like. Again, the, the piece just evolved, you know. I started with the, the center guy, yep. this chimp here. Yep. And then I thought, like, what am I going to do again? And then I, I thought about him striking another one. Yeah. So I made the, the second one. Yeah. And then I wanted to keep making more chimps because I was kind of addicted to chimps at the time. <laughs> so my sketchbook was full of chimp yeah. pages everywhere. And then I went to the zoo and I was drawing the chimps there. And... I was kind of addicted to chimps for like a few months. Uh, so I just you draw kept a lot too? doing that. Uh, I don't draw as much as I would like. Yeah. I know it's a dirty excuse, but I'm try I'm trying to maintain my sketchbook right right in front of me all, all the day, mm. like every day. So every single moment I have, I just go down to the sketchbook and, and just sketch something out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this is so beautiful. So much. Yeah, so it was make. about a month, yeah. And then the, the whole thing just started to happen. I love the angle of the baby, you know, and that. Yeah, the that, baby's that, going crazy. Yeah. yeah, and how those feet just make this beautiful line that goes right down to the to that guy on the right. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of off the flow of the, the piece, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome. So when you start these, you have no real idea where it's going. You're just playing. No, absolutely not. I was just doing this guy and then this guy. <coughs> and then it went from there and I did, I think it was seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was seven or eight of them. That's great. Yeah, it was, it was super fun too. Let's pop into your art station and then um, we've got a couple more things. And then uh, uh, guys, get your questions out and ready. Some of you guys are in the Character Artist Bootcamp that's um, the November one, and then some of you guys are in the Guild. And so we have Mariano for uh, an hour, although I think I, I'm still trying to talk you into a class. I'm not sure if we've talked about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked guys, a little bit. Yeah, so you guys can help me with that. Um, <laughs> so talk to me about your learning process. Like, what did it, how, how'd you go about the process of learning this stuff? Um, I don't know. I think it, it, it kind of just happened. Everything in my life kind of just happens. It's not really, uh, I'm not really super organized with stuff. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just goes by itself. Like, uh, like I was saying, I saw one of your videos uh, at a time. It was like six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just went crazy about anatomy. Mm. Awesome. And, let me show you here some silly stuff I did at the time. Yeah. Like, I remember as soon as I finished the video, I started sculpting. I had a bunch of uh, anatomy books. And uh, everything, like looking now, everything looks weird for me. Mm -hmm. But it was a great learning process. And a lot of it was based on stuff that you said. So that's why it's so crazy for me to be talking to you. That's awesome. Like a lot of stuff is wrong and proportions are weird, but it was a great way to learn. Wow. I was just going crazy about the names. I remember seeing you talking, like saying all the names of the stuff. I was like, oh my God, this guy really knows what he's saying. Yeah. It's crazy. And then I started to go into that and it was a really good push for me to start studying and going deep into anatomy. And I think this is, it's, like a, a major turning point for me. That's great. Yeah, I think the words are one of those things. It's like the words block us because they're kind of annoying and, you know, you have to memorize and learn. But then once you learn yeah. some of the words, it's like that's a key, you know. It's just – it just locks yeah. into your memory in a different way. Exactly. And I remember you saying, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the real name. You can just invent name to the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as you give – the 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 muscle uh, a name it it starts to exist like if it doesn't have a name it kind of doesn't exist in your head yeah and i was like yeah. oh that's that makes so much sense 
Ah, that's and then nice. Then I started to just do like sketching. I love to do like really low res stuff. Uh huh. So I did a bunch of studies. Uh, I had a, a digital sculpture class in Brazil mm -hmm. that I, I really uh, used to take the time there to, to study and do sketches and study the basics. Yeah. Because it, it's something that after you're in the industry, you kind of don't have time to study the basics anymore. Right. So for me, teaching was, was really important because I had to teach the basics. And I had to go through the basics every week with the students. Mm -hmm. So that helped me a lot too. Like a lot of anatomy sketches and yep. silly stuff. And going through the photos, yeah, trying nice. to see what's happening there. Yeah. Nice. This is all the anatomy work you were doing? Yeah, this is all the anatomy stuff I did like seven years ago mm -hmm. after I saw one of your videos. That's awesome. Yeah, so very old stuff. <laughs> that is cool. So anatomy has been an important part for you. And, um, yeah, learning. I think for me, anatomy is like the key point. Okay. But now you've been able to simplify anatomy and, and keep – the essence in the gesture like if you're looking at those three character sculpts um that are next to the uh, chimpanzee like you, the daredevil or, yeah like we're looking at fifth yeah. versus daredevil mm -hmm. you know this almost has a lucchese kind of feel like a bruno lucchese feel you know yeah. in terms of how the clothing's done and you know all of that so when mm -hmm. you're working now <laughs> you know how how important is anatomy in your process I think it's still super important. I think it's the, the thing that I give the most attention to mm -hmm. so far. And uh, even even when I'm doing like a, a character that is full of clothes and yep. you can barely see the body, I yeah. still do the whole body and the anatomy uh, for practice and for uh, uh, simulate or sculpt the clothes yeah. on top of the body. So I always kind of try to do the, the basic anatomy. Got it. So this yeah. guy's got his anatomy down underneath those pants and all that. It does, it does, yeah. Yeah, and are you using Marvelous Designer or are you just sculpting that straight? Uh, on this one, I think I use Mar Marvelous for the coat. Okay. And then I sculpt the pants and, and everything else. All right, uh, when you, and you twitched this, you said, right? A few live sessions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this one I did on the on a live session on Twitch. Okay. So how much time do you think you spend in Marvelous? Um, because I know Marvelous is some, sometimes you can get lost in Marvelous. Uh, uh, you can. Yeah. Marvelous is just, you can go really crazy on it. Yeah. But I, I try to keep it simple. Uh -huh. I, I know a lot of artists, um, like both uh, inside the, the work, like, as a professional and as a, a personal work, I know a lot of guys that spend a lot of time on Marvelous and try to do like seam lines and, and really complex shapes and folds and, and all that. And I, I try to keep it simple. I just try to keep the basic pattern and, and just simulate the drapery and then bring it to ZBrush and, and detail as I need. So I think for this guy, it was one live session, like two hours, two hours of live session. For the coat or for the character? No, for the whole character. And then I think it was another live session of two hours where I did uh, Daredevil and everything else. Okay, awesome. Man, that is really good. So that's going to be something that we have to watch, that's for sure. So anatomy is still key, um, but you yeah. also use the software like Marvelous Designer to get things um, working for you. Uh, yeah. Then what do you just bring it back into ZBrush and Dynamesh it and give it some thickness? Yeah, exactly. It's just because it's, it's so much faster, right? I, I still love to do like to sculpt uh, clothes. Yeah. And and an outfit in general, mm -hmm. but it's so much faster to use Marvelous once you you get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. It's really so much faster. You can do a full outfit in a day, where you would just uh, sculpt like a pair of pants. Mm -hmm. 
and, and barely, you know. So it really speeds up the process a lot. Yeah, yeah, I love Marvelous Designer. It's really important for us in the boot camp. Um, because, yeah. you know, you have to have something like that for, for characters, for games. You know, you can't, Absolutely. digital sculpting is uh, not going to work at the end of the day all the way through. Um, no, it does. It is very hard to compete with Marvel's. Oh, design. yeah. Yeah, huge. Um, what are these little tidbits? Like, you got these little um, artifacts on the. Oh, uh, those things? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like an uh, insert clay brush, I uh -huh. think. Yep. Just to, to like, kind of add this, this visual of a clay sculpture. I love that. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. It's something that I, I, I don't know, I love traditional art. I, I never really uh, spent a lot of time doing traditional sculpture, but I love this uh, sketchy feeling, you know? Something that I was just sketched really fast. And uh, I always try to simulate that on my personal work. Mm -hmm. So that, as you can see in, in most of my stuff, actually, like this guy's too. Same thing, I use the same brush that, that insert, insert clay that I made mm -hmm. just to give this feeling of yeah, like totally or clay pieces, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, who's, uh, what sculptors do you, do you follow? Uh, oh, my God. I follow so, so many guys. Um, like, I love old stuff, the, the, the masters. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, Rodin, uh, Michelangelo, uh, Da Vinci. Um, I don't know, so many guys. And then, like from the the, the, the current art scenario, I love uh, Simon Lee's a huge influence. Um, yeah, Simon uh, Lee is amazing. I took yeah, a Simon Lee is just a monster. Yeah. Uh, Gio Neckville is another guy that's a huge uh, influence. Mm -hmm. um, I love uh, Carl Swanter's stuff. He's not a, a actual sculptor, but his stuff is, has a lot of influence uh, influence on my work. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever heard of this guy? Um, I'm going to murder his name. He's French, but the Christophe Charbonnel. Uh, oh, I'm that's not sure. If I, if I see his work, I'm probably going to recognize yeah. it. I just posted it in chat. You can uh, do a quick Google and see. I, I was thinking about um, your insert mesh brush. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This guy's amazing. Yeah, love his stuff. I love his stuff, yeah. And those pieces are so big, yeah. You can see it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly the feeling I love. You know? Like Richard McDonald's stuff. Mm-hmm. Where you can really see the the, the marks of the tools. Yeah, I love that. In, in normally, in digital art, people try to just hide those things. Yeah. And I do the exact opposite. That's all. Awesome. Try to open something here. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and check the. Danny is asking, uh, do you usually sculpt from a base mesh or completely from scratch? Um, I guess it depends a lot. Like when I'm doing personal stuff, I don't follow any rule and I don't, I'm not in a rush. So I try to just take my time. And uh, I think the purpose of having a base mesh is saving time. Uh, and. So I'm, when I'm doing personal stuff, I'm, I kind of run from that. So I think this one I started from from a sphere and then just Dynamesh and pushed all the forms. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I go from there. It, it, and it depends. I, I love doing some exercises of trying to sculpt anything from anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if. If it's the right way to explain, uh, but I, I love to do those kind of exercises, you know, get some primitives. Like one day I, I was doing a live session on, on the Pixlogic channel, yeah. and I started a book from this. 
Nice. So it is, for me, it's a really cool exercise to train your eyes, you know? So when I'm, I'm doing personal stuff and, and fun stuff for myself, I try to make it as difficult as possible for me. Okay. Just to, to keep like pushing and, and getting faster into find the form. Okay. Uh, All right. That makes sense. Torture yourself a little bit. You like the yeah, challenge? Yeah. I like the challenge. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's see if I got something else here. Yeah, so I think it was this guy I sculpted, I sculpted from, from that primitive. Okay, nice. <laughs> so it was like a two hour live session. Yeah. On Zverse Twitch. Yeah. And I don't know, for me it's so fun. And I also don't, don't use symmetry. Mm -hmm. So I try to make it as hard as possible. Use almost no Ctrl Z. Uh, try not to save so much. Because mm -hmm. it, it kind of feels like cheating a little bit sometimes. Yeah. You know? And uh, let me show you that brush. So here. This one. So it's just a simple uh, multi-mesh insert, mm -hmm. uh, insert multi-mesh brush. Yeah. And then if you just click and drag, it's going to give you those uh, little pieces. Mm -hmm. And it makes it random. Oh, uh, so the orientation so is randomized? Yeah, the orientation and uh, the mesh selection. OK. Got it. So every time I click, it selects a different piece mm, here. Nice. That's handled so in the brush of, settings, right? Yeah, exactly. So it kind of kind of keeps it different all the time. You know? oh, and it gives you that kind of crazy clay feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot all about that setting. That's really cool. Yeah. So sometimes I use that to block out hair, like do some quick blocking here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I feel so, so much like an artist doing this. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It kind of goes back to traditional art a little bit. Totally. Yeah. No. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah and it, it reads. Gives you some crazy. Yeah, it reads so cool. <laughs> That's neat. And then you can just uh, dynamash it if yeah. you want. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like fun. I love this yeah, material then, too. Yeah, the material. I think it's a. I think it's a standard material with less uh, specular. Mm -hmm. Just have less influence of, of specular. And then I think this piece I was I, I just sent to Keyshot, and then added added uh, like a clay bump. Mm -hmm. to have this uh, little information like fingerprints and oh yeah no I've, I've done that that's fun <coughs> that's awesome and that kind of completes like everything together kind of completes the, the clay feeling yeah uh, how long did you spend on this piece did we did i ask that already yeah yeah it was a, about a month a month okay got it yeah all right now let's look at the what i think like just the coup de gara of uh, sculpting here is that last piece that you did. It's the second from the uh, left. This yeah. One? Yep. Man, that's just awesome. Uh, it's, uh, means a lot. Do you have yeah, this that, model that, in 3D? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see this. That's another one that was so fun to work on. I love the attention to detail, like the toes are doing something, the hands are always at, you know, a particular um, angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was very, like, a very organic mm -hmm. for me. It was like a very organic process. Uh, I 
kind of I just started with this guy because I went to I don't know if you know the band is uh, Apocalyptica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, it's a band. It's like four four guys playing uh, Metallica on nice. cellos. Yeah. So I went to a concert of those guys, and it was so amazing and inspiring that I came home. I just wanted to sculpt a guy playing cello. Mm -hmm. And then I started this guy, and I, I was testing a lot of poses again with no rush, no no timeline to kind of follow. Yeah. So I was just trying different poses, uh, different anatomy, pushing pushing the silhouette, the flow, and uh, and then I went to Montreal with my wife, and I uh, spent a week there off ZBrush, mm -hmm. like doing nothing, just sketching on my sketchbook. And uh, I just wanted to do something more complex on the piece. So I wanted to add a girl behind the guy singing. And then I don't know why, what I saw that just inspired me to do a tentacle. Mm -hmm. And then from the tentacle, I thought, like, what if the girl is part of the tentacle? Mm. <laughs> the thing just evolved, you know? I was kind of afraid of being too crazy. Like every couple of hours, I would just call my wife and say, "Like, am I going too far with this? Or, <laughs> That's is awesome. this still okay?" And she was like, "Oh my god, what is smoking? It's so <laughs> it's going too far. It's crazy." <laughs> and I, I just keep adding stuff, and then I wanted to do a kind of a loser feeling. Yeah, and it was great cracking thing with nature kind of a, a message behind the sculpture, mm -hmm. like the guy playing with nature, but nature behind of him in control of the situation. It was the whole deep thinking that I think it, it went just way too deep. Mm, man, but it got you results I'm, at the end of the day, right? Yeah, I, I think it was, I don't know, I, I'm really proud of this, of this piece. Not because of the quality, the quality, but because of the process as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. it was really cool to just let the thing evolve by itself and and just keep trying new stuff. I try a bunch of different poses, yeah, of different compositions, and till I find this one, and I thought, okay, that's it. That is something else. And so talk to me about process because you work in, um, like it's not all one piece, right? You got multiple pieces. She's a piece yeah. that's kind of pushed together. And um, so is there something, like why don't you just dynamesh it? Are you trying to save um, polygon count? Uh, yeah, I think if I, if I just, if I had done this as a single piece, it would be crazy heavy to have all the detail I needed. Yeah. So I kind of separate, separated everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I think the separation of the objects reflects a lot on on the the process, the process itself. Like I started with this guy, so this guy is one thing, mm -hmm. and, and uh, this thing is another thing, and then the idea of the girl, so the girl is another thing, and then the tentacle. I think the, the idea of the tentacle came before the girl, actually. So it was something like that. Okay. On the beginning. Oh, right. And it was just you go, guy you're, so you're just going from idea to idea, and, and each one of these sub-tools is almost like it's its own idea. Exactly, exactly. That's wow. It. That's Sorry, awesome. I, I don't know how to explain a lot, especially in English. It's hard for me because it's not my first language. Uh, yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. it pretty, uh, each each sub tool is is pretty much its own idea. So then the base evolves this kind of wave, and then the girl behind it, mm -hmm. and then the hair mm -hmm. in different sub tools. So in the end, it's this whole. This whole thing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, let me get some questions from you guys. Uh, Andrew <laughs> was saying, oh, Andrew had a question. Uh, Andrew was saying, do you 
do you do the Marvelous Designer in pose or um, simulate it? Like how how does it work if it's in a pose? Um, I guess it's, it works the same way. It, it depends when I'm doing toys and or like game characters mm -hmm. or cinematic characters. Yeah. I, I usually work in T pose. Okay. So then I, I simulate the the clothes um, on T pose. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing uh, sculptures like like that guy from Daredevil or yeah. this Chinese guy, yeah. I just did the whole body, the anatomy, and everything, and brought that to Marvelous and simulate the pattern on top of the pose already. Okay. And then on this one, I also simulate a wind coming from, from like here. Mm -hmm. So you can see the clothes just following some kind of interference from the wind. Okay. Same thing with the other piece. It's like you can see the wind simulation. Yep. It's also in pose. The pose on this one is pretty simple, but still pose. Yeah. Was the... Um... Uh, did you sculpt the uh, what did they call it? The belt? The the yeah, it was called the belt on the guy, or did you marvelous that too? On this one? Yeah. On the, the big guy? Yeah. Uh, the big guy. I think the belt is just I I, I did the coat and then I did a, a strat on the coat to so yeah. extract the belt. Yeah. And then I just kind of follow the forms. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But again, it, it depends from projects to projects. Like this one, I did, I did everything marvelous, mm -hmm. and it was in T pose like this. Yep. And that's the ridiculous sketch from the start. Awesome, man! So awesome to see this. All right, let's head back to your art station, and I got a couple more questions. And um, uh, then I think, like, what would be a good thing um, to kind of demonstrate or to get a sense. I mean, I think we've all had a really awesome uh, walk through this. Uh, so let me see if there's any questions, anybody that's got something that we can kind of uh, unpack. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac is asking, what are some of the benefits of being a freelancer instead of being part of a studio? Um, well, I guess the benefits are, are, are kind of... I wouldn't say they're they're obvious, but it's it's like you can do your own schedule. Mm -hmm. So you do your own time. You can work two hours in the morning, two hours uh, on the afternoon, and then do five hours at night yeah. when everyone is sleeping. So that's pretty much what I do. Uh, but you can work like eight hours, like if you would be on a studio and then don't work anymore. So hours are really flexible. You can just stop working whenever you feel like. Right. That can be a, a that could that could be something bad as well. It depends on on you actually. Mm -hmm. So it could be bad because you just lose focus. You know, you can just not work it's just way more fun to go and watch netflix all day or play video games mm -hmm. and then you wouldn't work so you you gotta keep in check with that and uh i don't know so flexibility and uh i think that life and work balance that i was talking about yeah on the beginning i think that's the biggest uh the biggest thing for me mm -hmm. where you can really control a little bit more what happens in your day. Uh, you can just travel more, you can do more stuff with your family, you can adapt your schedule. Like if you have kids, like I don't have kids yet, mm -hmm. but if you have kids, you can uh, stay with your kids during the day and then work at night when everyone's sleeping. Yeah. Uh, and if you're at a studio, you obviously can't do that. You have to stay in the studio the whole day, and then you come home, and everyone is tired. And it's kind of, it's kind of that balance that is the best point for me. Mm, that's great. Uh, David's asking, uh, did you learn more working for a company or being on your own? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's kind of the same actually. 
it, it depends on your mindset. You know, you can you can be in a company and not work and not uh, learn as much, mm -hmm. and you can be at home and also not learn as much. I think it depends on your mindset. Uh, I try to keep uh, learning, and I have a lot of that uh, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I keep always looking at our station, and I keep thinking like. If I don't do anything this week, uh, next week I won't remember how to sculpt. I won't be a good artist anymore. So I, I'm full of those crazy thoughts. So I always try to keep uh, doing stuff and, and pushing myself, even when I'm at, stu at a studio working. Yeah. So uh, my time at all the studios I, I went through was really productive. My first studio was uh, Techno Image in Brazil. Uh, I spent two years there uh, working with uh, some big names like uh, Pedro Conti, uh, Tiago Reusel. Um, so they, they teach me a lot. I learned a lot from them. And then I went to another studio working with animation and I learned a lot there also. And then I went freelancing in Brazil I started uh, working for toys and cinematics, so I learned a lot there too. And at Rockstar was another super huge learning curve uh, on the game design standpoint. Mm -hmm. And now I'm kind of trying to push more of my personal work. So uh, you can learn everywhere. It depends on you basically. Uh, there's, uh, Isaac's got a question. No, not Isaac. This is Jane. Jane is asking, uh, how do you know how to price your work when clients approach you? And, you know, obviously you're at a, um, you've been working with clients for a while, so you've established that and, and everything's mm -hmm. good. But really like if somebody is beginning, um, and they're getting some, like clients are coming to them saying something, you know, like, we, mm -hmm. I like your work. Can you do this? What advice can you give people for how to price that? Um, I think you can, uh, especially today, it's it's so easy to just reach out to other artists, you know, just go to Facebook and and go to someone that you admire or that uh, is working in the industry and just ask them. You can always ask them. It's the most easy way to kind of have a, a, a initial base to price something. Mm -hmm. But... I think it, it varies a lot. Even for me, it's still, like I have my clients uh, that we have some kind of um, accord. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the word, but. Yeah, agreement uh, so or accord. Agreement, yeah, we have we have agreements. Uh, but every now and then I'm, I'm always uh, talking to my friends from the industry and, and seeing if um, um, my price is too cheap or is too high. So I'm, I'm trying to always keep with, with the other guys. And of course, you, you have to compare yourself as well. Yeah. So if you ask someone, like if you ask Simon Lee how much he, char he, he charges for a sculpture, of course, you're not going to charge the same because you're not Simon Lee, right? Right. The, at least that's the way I think. So you kind of have a base there. Like, I'm, kind of half of Simon Lee, so I can charge half, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and then you, you talk to more people and you see if that's kind of realistic or not. Mm -hmm. So kind of goes from there. Got it. That makes sense. All right. So um, if somebody, so it depends on the project. Uh, is it, uh, do you recommend they take like hours and they project how much it works or do you prefer to work with flat fees? Um, yeah, I, again, I, I guess it depends. You can work, like I, us, I usually work with a, a daily rate mm -hmm. or a per project rate. Okay, great. Yeah. So, but, but even on a per project date um, uh, rate, I, I kind of think about how many days it would take for mm -hmm. me to do something. Yeah. And then I have my, my daily rates and I just multiply that. Got it. So it kind of... Uh, just think about a daily rate. Uh, think about the salary you, you want or you have in the end of the month and try to see how much you, you'd make a day. 
and go from there. And don't forget, to, <coughs> don't forget to add taxes. And if you're in a, the U.S., add, exactly. uh, add self-employment tax. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Day rate, I think, is a really interesting point too, because then you can always you, you can give half a like you can just say, hey, if you only need me for four hours, that's that. Not that any model takes four hours. Mm -hmm. Like my totally, videographer totally. gives me a day rate, and we decide if it's a half a day or a full day. And that just mm -hmm. makes life easier. So if it goes over yeah. half a day, yeah, I have to pay more. But, you know, when I need him to exactly. work like a, a long, long ass day, it's still just a full day rate. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of avoids uh, problems down the road. Like if, if you do so, if you work a month in a model and then suddenly the client just wants to change everything, mm -hmm. they have to pay to keep paying you know, yep. in order for you to keep working and, and changing stuff. If you're working in a per project rate, it kind of, it's, it's, it gets kind of loose. So the client kind of feel that he can just change everything and the price is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So a, a daily rate kind of avoids that. That's awesome. All right, my friend. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, so I guess the any more questions, guys, shout them out. But otherwise, what I'd really love is um, just for what um, – you've, you've been through this you and you've achieved. I mean I understand the imposter syndrome. I, I understand it very, very well. <laughs> uh, but you have achieved you know, what most of us would consider success. Uh, that's – that's, you've that's worked in the game industry you're a freelancer you're doing your own work <laughs> and you're getting clients so uh what kind of uh what what do you think helped you get here like if you were to say what are the i don't know if it's the habits or the way that you think about things that really helped you throughout your career um uh, let me think I don't know. I, I just I remember when I started on the industry, mm -hmm. like when I started discovering the CGI world, mm -hmm. and when I discovered ZBrush, I was so in love with this that I couldn't even sleep. Like literally, I would just sleep as late as possible and wake up as soon as possible to just mm -hmm. keep sculpting. Yeah. So I think that, and and I still feel that. Like yesterday, I went to uh, to the movies to watch uh, Shape of Water. Ah, uh, yeah, was so I haven't seen that yet. It was so inspiring. It was so it was so mind blowing that I came home and I was sculpting until three in the morning, just because I just love to do this. So I think if you want to succeed working in with art, you gotta love it because it's a lot of time that you have to put into. It. And if you don't love it, you're just going to be miserable. Mm. So I think that's um, that's one of the key things for me. I just like doing it. I would do it for free. And that's my mindset. And I, I also don't rush. Don't, I, I don't rush things. I think the work kind of speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. So when I started and like throughout my career, Did I lose you? Testing. I'm still here. Mariano, I lost your audio. And it looks like another one's coming in. Hello? Yep, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. I think something went wrong with the browser here. Uh, oh yeah, that's how, that'll happen. Okay. Yeah. So you were saying you don't rush. The work speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. I think like throughout my my career, I saw a lot of people that started on the industry kind of late, mm -hmm. like not really late, but like 25, 30 years old, and they already had bills to pay. So they are, they were really rushing things, trying to like, oh, I, I really need a job. I need to get good by the end of the year. Yeah, I need to uh, produce 10 pieces to have a solid portfolio in six months. And that simply doesn't happen. Right. So 
I, I always try to tell tell people to not rush things. When your work get matures enough, the clients will come. And I really believe in that. That's a good point. That's great. I love that. So make sure that you love it and don't yeah, rush. Totally. You think those are... Yeah, don't rush it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, especially, especially today with the internet, you barely have to go after clients anymore. You just keep posting your stuff and, and when your work gets good, good enough for someone, a client will come. And there's clients for everyone. There are clients that don't have money and they want to pay $300 for a character and they're not going to pay Simon Lee to do a character for them. They're going to pay a guy that is on the beginning of his career. Right. So you always have clients. So as, as soon as your work gets mature enough, the clients will come no matter what level. Awesome. All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out and for sharing your work and your process. And, um, and I'll, I'll hit you up about that class later on today. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation. It was really surreal for me to be here talking to you. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, no, it's great. I love to see this work, man. And I tell you, um, just the the way in which you know you think about this and you approach this stuff from like a relaxed perspective and you let it just happen. And you, I mean, it's almost like you trust your process. Yeah. And, that's a hard thing for us to do. So it's really inspiring to see somebody who trusts, you know, that it's going to happen. Totally. totally. And I, and also I spent so much time in ZBrush that I completely merged with the software. <laughs> so I, I don't even think about the, the two anymore. Yeah. I spent like 12 hours a day on ZBrush for 10 years now. Mm. So I'm kind of one with the thing. Yeah. That just awesome. happens. All right, man. Well, take care of yourself, and I will. Uh, I'll send shoot you off an email later on, and um, stay in touch. And, Absolutely. Uh, take it easy, man. Thanks everyone for for being here. Yeah. All right, my friends. Uh, so, if you are in the character artist boot camp, um, you just I'm going to end this meeting, and you just click the same link, and I'll see you guys all there. And for those of you who are in the guild, have an awesome day. And Mariana, thank you again, my friend. Take care of yourself. Cheers, man. Take it easy. All right. Cheers, guys.